Hey guys, it's your favorite medical channel, Medicosis Perfectionalis. This is the video number 12 in our series about rheumatology. In the previous video, we have talked about the anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies. Today, we'll talk about rheumatoid factors. But please remember, anti-nuclear antibodies, or ANA, were antibodies against the nucleus. Anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies were antibodies against the cytoplasm. Rheumatoid factor, on the other hand, is an antibody against an antibody, which is like a dog chasing its tail, and the result is not fun. It's what we call disease, which literally mean there is no more ease. Oh my goodness, I'm so deep, and let's get started. Here is the list of my previous rheumatology videos, just giving you an idea of what you're missing by not subscribing to my awesome channel. You're losing, not me. Rheumatology, what does ology mean? The study of, what does rheuma mean? The flow, they thought there was a fluid going through your body and spreading symptoms all over the place. It's not actually fluid, they are kind of autoantibodies, but you get the idea. Welcome to rheumatology, where no single blood test whatsoever can confirm the diagnosis. Just because you have positive ANA doesn't mean you have lupus. Rheumatology is all about pattern recognition. The lab result has to fit with the history and the physical exam. That's why you need a doctor to diagnose you, not a pharmacist or a lab technician, God help you. The $63,000 question is this, does the lab test correlate with the clinical picture? That's what rheumatology is all about. We have talked about anti-nuclear antibody before. Remember, they are O2 antibodies against your nucleus. It's only positive if the titer is greater than 1 to 80. The higher the titer, the more likely than not you have an autoimmune disease. Because the higher the titer, it means you have more serum O2 antibodies in your plasma. The higher the titer does not, does not mean the disease is more severe. Anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies, on the other hand, are IgG O2 antibodies against the cytoplasm of neutrophils and monocytes associated with vasculitides. But again, they do not correlate with disease activity. Today's topic is rheumatoid factor, which is an O2 antibody, meaning antibody against the self against yourself so it's an anti immunoglobulin antibody which means it's an antibody against an antibody like a dog chasing its tail what kind of antibody usually igm against the fc portion of igg so here is the igm here is your rheumatoid factor here is the nasty o2 antibody against what against igg which part of igg please be specific the FC portion of IgG. They will bind together, forming an immune complex, and baby, you are on fire, disease-wise. Also remember, rheumatoid factor could be also a cryoglobulin, which means on cooling, the antibody precipitates. Because the word cryo just means cold. That's why there is a term called cryotherapy. Medicine is just all linked together and intermingled, and you need a medicosis to unwrap it for you. We divide rheumatological diseases wisely into non-inflammatory and inflammatory. Why is this wise? Because septic arthritis is a medical emergency. Don't confuse inflammatory, which is urgent, with non-inflammatory, which, ah, okay, not so urgent. So, rheumatoid arthritis is an inflammatory arthritis, which means you will have redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. Also, you will have symmetrical disease and the symptoms will improve as the day progresses. Don't be an ideologue, be a pragmatic. Rheumatoid factor is mostly IgM, but it doesn't have to be IgM. Could be IgG, IgA, IgE, IgD, or anything. Remember, when I told you about the immune hemolytic anemia, we had several subtypes, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, drug-induced hemolytic anemia, and alloimmune hemolytic anemia. 
In autoimmune hemolytic anemia, we had two subtypes, IgG, which was the warm subtype, and IgM, which was the cold subtype. Remember, five seconds ago, I've told you that IgM could be a cryoglobulin because IgM is the cold one. IgM just loves the cold. It makes perfect sense. I don't memorize medicine. I just understand. I'm not like those idiots that go on YouTube and title their video, how I memorized everything in medical school. No, honey, you didn't. And the mnemonic that we use to remember IgG for the warm subtype and IgM for the cold subtype, some idiot students use this crazy mnemonic, warm weather is great, cold ice cream is yummy, but cold ice cream could also be great. So the mnemonic that I use is, here's the sun, of course it's warm. The sun is circular, just draw a G inside of it to remember IgG is warm. Boom! The IgM is a pentamer, which means it has five pieces and it looks exactly like a snowflake. And snowflake is for cold, so IgM is cold. Why do we call some people snowflakes? Because they melt under pressure. I have good news for you, 50 hematology cases written by yours truly are now available on Patreon. Go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Come on guys, it's only for a limited availability. So I've warned you. Rheumatoid factor, the IgM against the FC portion of IgG. Let's talk about sensitivity and specificity. Sensitivity is 80%, specificity is 75%, so it's more sensitive than specific, which means it's more important in ruling out the disease. For example, when your rheumatoid factor is negative, it's pretty unlikely that you have rheumatoid arthritis. Doesn't mean it's 100%, but it's 80%, that's fair enough. ANA for lupus, has a sensitivity of 95%. So it's even better in ruling out the disease. If you go to your doctor without any symptoms, you think you have lupus, for some reason they agree to run the ANA test and it's negative, it's very, very, very unlikely that you have lupus because the sensitivity of the ANA test for SLA is greater than 95%. So, negative ANA test's ability to rule out lupus is superior to the negative rheumatoid factor ability to rule out rheumatoid arthritis. I know that I'm comparing apples to oranges, but you get the basic idea. Rheumatoid factor, however, is very unspecific. Why? Because it could be elevated in all of these diseases. This is by definition non-specific. So, rheumatoid factor can be positive in rheumatoid arthritis. Systemic lupus, erythematosus, Jogren syndrome, interstitial pulmonary fibrosis, hepatitis B. Wow, even hepatitis B. Yep. Essential mixed cryoglobulinemia. Remember, IgM. Infectious mononucleosis, tuberculosis, hematological malignancies, and infective endocarditis. It's one of the minor Duke's criteria to diagnose infective endocarditis or subacute bacterial endocarditis. Rheumatological diseases, non-inflammatory, inflammatory, non-inflammatory, non such as osteoarthritis, you do not have the cardinal signs of inflammation. Here in inflammatory arthritis, such as rheumatoid, you have the cardinal signs of inflammation. In non-inflammatory, the inflammation is asymmetric. The right knee and the left knee, for example, are not affected at the same rate. Just like the tires in your car, they don't wear out at the same rate because it's a purely mechanical friction wear and tear pattern. Here in inflammatory, you have O2 antibodies that do not discriminate. In non-inflammatory arthritis, it's worse in the evening. Inflammatory arthritis, the pain or the stiffness is worse in the morning. And it is relieved as the day progresses because you are washing out the inflammatory debris. How about ESR and CRP here within normal limit? In inflammatory arthritis such as rheumatoid, ESR and CRP should be high. They are called acute phase reactants, which I've talked about in a previous video. We divide inflammatory arthritis into seropositive and seronegative. What does seropositive mean? The serum is positive for, we mean rheumatoid factor. So when we say seronegative arthritis, we mean they don't have the rheumatoid factor. Cool. Seropositive arthritis, example, rheumatoid, lupus, Jogren, and even systemic sclerosis. 
rheumatoid factor negative, also known as seronegative spondyloarthropathies, they are the HLA B27 positive arthritis, but we call them seronegative because they are negative for the rheumatoid factor, not for the B27. Example, psoriatic arthritis, which some people call psoriatic arthritis. I couldn't care less. Ankylosing spondylitis, inflammatory bowel disease associated arthritis, and reactive arthritis. For the A plus student, rheumatoid factor, as you know, is IgM autoantibody against the FC portion of IgG. They combine together forming an immune complex. This immune complex actually is type 3 hypersensitivity reaction. Don't ever forget this. This immune complex will cause the inflammation. Let's wrap it up. Rheumatoid factor is more sensitive than specific. Translation, it's more capable of ruling out the disease than ruling in. Rheumatoid factor is one of the criteria of diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid factor is positive in 80% of patients with rheumatoid arthritis. That's, that's why it has 80% sensitivity, which means 20%. Only 20% of patients with rheumatoid arthritis will have negative rheumatoid factor. High levels of rheumatoid factor in the plasma is correlated with much poor prognosis and you're more likely to get joint erosions and deformities if you have high levels of rheumatoid factors. This is different from anti-nuclear antibody because anti-nuclear antibody didn't have any prognostic value. Just because you have positive ANA doesn't mean you have poor prognosis and it didn't correlate with the symptoms. Just because you have positive ANA doesn't mean that you have acute rheumatoid or rheumatological symptoms right now. It doesn't correlate and it has no prognostic value. On the other hand, rheumatoid factor has prognostic value and it does correlate with the severity or the symptomaticity of the patient. Thank you for watching. Get my notes and get my 50 hematology cases by going to Patreon. Please support this channel, subscribe, hit the bell. Thank you for watching. Until next time, be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis.